Today we're going to be taking a look at the EcoFlow River 2 portable power station. This is an all-in-one battery, charger, inverter and DC power supply in a compact and portable package to take care of all of your power needs on days out, at work sites or on camping trips. EcoFlow have sent me the River 2 along with a 110 watt solar panel to try out. So let's get it unboxed and we'll then take a closer look at what it has to offer. In the box we've got the River 2 power station, a mains power cable, a car charger cable and a quick start guide. So there really isn't much in the box, but that's a good thing, because EcoFlow have integrated everything you need into the River 2, so you don't need to carry around additional charger bricks, adapters or regulators. Inside the River 2 is a 256 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which is good for over 3000 full power cycles. So if you used the full battery capacity every day, it would last up to 10 years and still have 80% of its original capacity. Lithium ion phosphate batteries are also less prone to combustion and thermal runaway than lithium ion batteries. And the integrated battery management system continuously monitors the voltage, current and temperature to ensure that it stays within safe operating limits. Using the built-in mains charger, you can charge the EcoFlow River 2 at up to 360 watts which will take you from 0 to 100% in just one hour. So even if you've forgotten to charge the power station the day before your trip, you should still have enough time to charge it while you prepare your things before heading out. The River 2 also gives you three other ways to charge it. You can use the included car charger cable to charge it up to 100 watts while you drive to your destination, or charge it at up to 110 watts using solar power or even charge it using your laptop charger at up to 60 watts through the dual-purpose USB-C port on the front. One thing to keep in mind with the River 2 is that unlike some of the other power stations, you can't use multiple charging methods at the same time. So for example, you can't have it plugged into mains and charging from USB-C to get it to charge faster. The solar input allows you to input up to 110 watts of solar power, meaning that you can fully charge an empty battery in around 3 hours, or just keep it topped up while you're using it on a sunny day. To keep the battery and inverter cool, there's a fan between the power inputs on the back. This isn't always on, it's PWM controlled and only comes on under higher loads, particularly when charging or when supplying high AC or DC outputs. There is a fan symbol that is shown on the display on the front when the fan is running. It's also cleverly positioned under the handle, so it can't be easily blocked if the device is pushed up against a flat surface. To use the stored power, there are a range of ports and outlets on the front of the River 2. On the left side of the display is a DC output, which can provide 12 volts at up to 100 watts. On the right side of the display is an AC outlet, which is rated for 300 watts, but can power up to 600 watt appliances using EcoFlow's X-Boost mode, which we'll take a look at in a little. Beneath the display are three USB ports, two Type-A ports which can each do 2.4 amps, and one Type-C port which supports power delivery up to 20 volts and 60 watts. This is the same port that can be used to charge the River 2. The display on the front of the River 2 is similar to that on other EcoFlow models, and gives you a lot of information on the status of the device. From left to right it shows you the time to fully charged or fully empty, depending on whether the battery is being charged or drained. It shows you the battery capacity within a power draw animation ring, and then it shows you the total power input and power output in watts alongside it. The display turns itself off after a few seconds to save power, but you can wake it by short pressing the power button. You can also tell whether the River 2 is on or off by the small LED below the display. This slowly fades on and off when the unit is on. You can also use the River 2 as a UPS, which will pass power through from mains to your connected device and in the event of a power outage, it'll switch over in under 30 milliseconds, so you won't even notice that you've lost mains power. Now that we've had a look at some of the features of the River 2, let's try to do some tests on it. Out of the box, it had a 29% charge, and this went up to 37% while checking the charging options. So let's drain that completely first, and we can then test the claim that it can be fully charged in under an hour. 
I hooked it up to one of my 3D printers, which uses about 50 watts once heated, and I left it to drain completely. The River 2 stops the AC outlet when the battery is depleted to prevent over discharge, but the battery management system and display remain active a while longer. Next I hooked up the AC charger and timed how long it took to charge to 100% capacity. After a few seconds the display indicated that it would be fully charged in 57 minutes. In a little under half an hour the battery was at 43% and the display indicated 34 minutes remaining, so it was still on track to complete the charge in under an hour. After 57 minutes the battery was full and the power input ramped down, so the management system is quite good at predicting the time it needs to fully charge the battery with a consistent power supply, and you can definitely fully charge the River 2 in under an hour like they claim. Next I tried the DC output on a small 36 watt air pump like you would use for camping. That ran well as you'd expect and the display indicated that it could power the pump for around 6 hours. The AC output is where the River 2 gets interesting. The River 2 is equipped with a 300 watt AC inverter, but using EcoFlow's XBoost technology, they claim that you can run most appliances up to 600 watts without overloading it. So I'm going to try power this electric brush with a heating element that has 3 stages, with the highest draw being 800 watts. So the River 2 powers the brush through all three settings, and you can see the displayed power output doesn't go much over 350 watts. But you've probably also heard that the motor in the brush sounds like it's slowing down at higher heat settings. XBoost is able to power the brush on the higher setting by still only outputting a little over 300 watts. It does this by intelligently reducing the output voltage so that the inverter is not being overloaded, but is still powering the appliance. Now obviously this is going to lead to a slight reduction in performance of the appliance, but it does at least give you a way to use it. There are also some limitations with XBoost. You can't use it while the River 2 is charging, and because it's changing the supply voltage, there may be a further reduction in performance if you're using multiple devices on it. So you really only want to use a single AC appliance if you're using XBoost. This is not so much an issue on the River 2, since it only has a single AC outlet, but it is something to be aware of on their larger power stations like the Delta series. You can also turn XBoost off in the settings menu in the app, if this is something you don't want to use. I then tried the USB-C port to charge my MacBook and it indicated that it was charging at 60 watts, which is the maximum they claim it can do. Likewise, plugging the MacBook's charger into the River 2 allowed it to charge at 60 watts. EcoFlow's 110 watt solar panel is made up of monocrystalline silicon cells on a waterproof foldable panel. I really like this design, it's compact when folded up and the carrier bag feels like it's really good quality with rubberized water resistant zips. The surface of the solar panel is a bit weird. I've never seen a solar panel look like this, it's almost like a rubberized surface as well, but I guess that's part of what makes it waterproof and durable. To hook it up to the River 2, you just connect the panel to an included XT60 charging cable and then plug this into the port on the back of the River 2. This can be set up using the carrier bag as a stand. With the panel in full afternoon sun, I get a little over 90 watts out of it. As with any solar panel, it needs to be facing the sun directly to get the most power out. Just rotating it a few degrees to better face the sun, I got an extra 10 watts.
The panels are also chainable, so you can hook up multiple 110 watt solar panels to their larger power stations if you'd like to. The River 2 only supports up to 110 watts of solar input, so we're only able to use it with a single panel. Lastly, you can hook up the River 2 to your smartphone through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. This allows you to monitor and control it, as well as change its settings. From the main screen, you can also see the time remaining to fully charged or empty. You can see the current rates of charge and discharge in watts, and each of the individual ports below that. You can turn the AC or DC inputs and outputs on and off remotely through the app as well. So you've got a lot more control than what you can do on the River 2 itself. As I said previously, you can also access the device settings. This allows you to do things like turn X boost on or off, set timeouts, manage charge and discharge levels, and even reduce the maximum power that the River 2 can draw from mains or a car charger when charging. So if we turn it down to a maximum of 100 watts, then it limits the maximum charger draw. This is useful if you're at a campsite, or if you're charging it from another low capacity power source. Without this, it'll just trip or overload the device that you're trying to charge it from. In my opinion, one of the best features of the River 2 is just how portable it is for the features it includes. It weighs only 3.5 kilograms, or less than a gallon of milk for those aren't on the metric system. And unlike the previous generation River, the flat top and sides make it stackable, so it'll fit right in amongst your bags and equipment. It's even got rubber feet on the bottom so it doesn't slide around. Overall, I'm quite impressed with the River 2. The build quality is great and it's got a good set of features for its size and price. And with the lithium iron phosphate battery, it should last you a number of years. The only drawbacks are probably going to be the relatively low battery capacity and inverter power output because of its compact size. But if these are too low for you, then the River 2 Max doubles up on them as an alternative. And the River 2 Pro, which is launching early May, has three times the battery capacity of the River 2 so EcoFlow have you covered with the range of options. And any model in the River series is going to be a great companion on days out or for short camping trips. Let me know what you think of the EcoFlow River 2 in the comment section below, and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see me test on it. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.